It is the fight that escalated into the latest school shooting in our country. We heard glass breaking, and he continued to shoot. And I called my mom, and I told her I love her, and I hung up the phone. Three people shot inside Mansfield ISD's Timberview High School this morning. That was the first thing that he said. Mom, I'm okay, but there's a shooting at the school. Frightened parents rushing to the scene. Some parked on the side of a busy highway next to the school, texting with their kids, waiting for hours in some cases to be reunited. God's with us, and he's here to protect us. Sorry. Come here, babe. It's okay. The reality of what happened hours before, now, tonight, just beginning to set in for families. You know, you can't take it for granted when you drop them off at school anymore. So pretty tough words that have been echoed throughout this day. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our live coverage and team coverage here at 6 o'clock on CBS 11 News. I'm Doug Dunbar. So we're live at Mansfield ISD Center for the Performing Arts. This is what has been the reunification center through the afternoon, but as you see right now, all is quiet. The last parents and students leaving within the last hour. Uh, however, at this very moment, Chopper 11, let me give you a live picture of uh, the area where this all started. That is Mansfield Timberview High School. Police, ATF, FBI, they are now all in involved with the unfolding investigation tonight. It is important to know that as of right now, the young man who stands accused of opening fire inside the school, that's 18-year-old Timothy George Simpkins, he is sitting in jail right now. Uh, the backstory on that, if you're not aware yet, he, about four hours ago, uh, turned himself in. Arlington PD announcing that he was taken into custody. He was charged with multiple counts of aggravated assault. Police say basically after the shooting, their uh, knowledge says he left the school and then somehow ended up talking with his attorney rather quickly, ultimately turning himself in at the police department. So to the victims today, four people we do know were hurt in the violence. The youngest, a 15-year-old, latest update there, critical condition. That is after successful surgery, we're told, at Medical City Arlington. We've got a 25-year-old male employee. That's the oldest of the four. That person at school uh, at the time is now listed in good condition, still in the hospital. There's a teenage girl also being treated in the hospital at the moment. One other person we do know who was cared for at the school did not end up going to the hospital. So those account uh, account for the four who were injured today. We've got so much to get to this half hour. You have had so many questions throughout this day, so we want to kind of walk through the process and where we stand. We've got Steve Pickett right now, who's going to be looking deeply into the investigation for you, asking some direct questions, especially about security today. Jason Allen here. He's uh, here on property at the reunification point today. Some really compelling stories with students and parents and that coming together and the really heart-wrenching moments in between. Also, Robbie Owens near the home where Simpkins lives. Police have been going through that this afternoon. Steve Pickett, I want to start with you. The obvious point, the investigation. I mentioned the multiple agencies from local all the way to federal. Where do things stand as we speak right now at 6 o'clock? Uh, they essentially have been uh, wrapping it up here for the most part inside this building, Doug. In terms of evidence gathering, we were told that although they wanted to make sure, they wanted to ensure, to, uh, to reassure so many folks that everything was fine on the inside of this campus. And also this, there were so many kids clearly that were terrified by what happened here. Police emphasizing that they call this not a random act. They say in their words, this school was not under attack. Well, for the 1,700 children who were inside here today, they may view that just a little bit differently when they heard that gunfire today. Uh, that violence apparently, however, started on this campus with two teenagers. Police point to this video shot by a student earlier this morning. It shows two boys fighting in a classroom. Police believed one of those teenagers is Timothy Simpkins, the man now in custody. Uh, he, according to those authorities, they allege that Simpkins brought a gun to this campus at some point during or after that fight, he accessed that 45 caliber and started shooting. A 15-year-old, as you mentioned, Doug, hit with at least one of those gunshots. That 25-year-old teacher, the male teacher, also wounded, and that female student grazed by the bullet as well. Police quickly issuing a public alert for Simpkins. He left this campus, we were told, by a car. The gun, they say, used in all of this was found about two miles in Grand Prairie on a street. And just after 1 p.m., Simpkins, with a lawyer, as you mentioned, surrendered to police at Arlington PD headquarters. What we believe happened preliminary is that there was a fight between a student and another individual in a class, and a gun was used. When the police officers heard uh, over the radio uh, that there was a, uh, a teacher that was in distress, 
The police officers immediately went to that classroom. And I can tell you that one police officer heard the shots uh, as he was going up there. Our teams have finished searching the school. We didn't find any additional threats. The suspect is in custody. Police obviously want to talk to the 15 year old who is now in ICU. Uh, it is believed that victim is the kid who was allegedly fighting with Mr. Simpkins in that video. Uh, and again, the other concern with so many youngsters inside this building, when those shots were fired, uh, we were told by this school district, no, there are no metal detectors at the front door when these children come to this school every morning. Doug. Hey, Steve, one other question, if you could address, because I know you've been talking to authorities. Uh, at that 145 press conference that I watched, police voiced a lot of concern about social media threats, school threats being posted online. What do you know about what they said there and, and what, what's going on with that? Uh, they were very matter of fact. They said students, not only from this campus, but they believe throughout the area were posting social media threats uh, among other campuses to other students. And it was putting uh, detectives, investigators on these uh, particular paths to look at other cases or other alleged incidents. And they said that cannot happen. They urged parents to watch their students' social media presence, that they are going to arrest students who engage in that kind of activity, and said they saw it all day today. Despite the concern here, they believe that there were other young people who were part of this campus and others who were on social media suggesting more violence was coming to other campuses. Doug. Steve Pickett, diving deep into the details. Thank you so much for the clarity on so much, Steve. Uh, so after the shooting, parents immediately, our, our natural reaction as a mom or dad, right? We rushed to the school. We ended up, though, in this case, obviously, they had a plan of action. Parents ended up coming over here to the Center for Performing Arts. Jason Allen, let's bring you in. Uh, you and I both witnessed uh, that, that worst day for a parent when, when they hear something like this is unfolded and the raw emotion of parents waiting and wondering and then thankfully at the end of the day being reunited. Right, Doug, and that's why it's good to see this parking lot here at the Performing Arts Center empty tonight because it means that those families are back together. But this was really the, the end point with, for what was a long but necessary and very thorough process this afternoon in reuniting these kids and their parents. Parents, of course, wanted to get to their kids right away this morning when this happened. And we know that students wanted to get out of wherever they were locked down as well. Some were in classrooms, others in locker rooms, and they didn't all know exactly what was going on. Meanwhile, they're sending texts to their parents as they heard that there was a shooting, but police had to keep them where they were while they searched the campus because at that point the suspect was not in custody yet. Then when they released students, they checked each and every one of their IDs, make sure that they were who they were saying they were. They put them on buses to get away from campus and then meet with parents here in a place that the district knew was safe. Yeah, well, she texted me when I was at work and she said, Mom, this is not a drill and I love you. And I, and that was a little hard for me this morning. I mean, I can't imagine. It's got to be very stressful when you don't know what's going on and they tell you you can't move. and. You know, you know what that means in this day and age uh, when that happens. Uh, the adrenaline set and my emotions were, yeah, yeah. It could have been worse, but we thank God it wasn't. Sorry, Mark. Thank God it wasn't. Some of these parents uh, had kids that were right near the classroom where this happened. Some of them were, you know, down the hallway, or another part of the building. But, Doug, it really didn't matter. It was the same sense of relief when they all came together this afternoon and they realized that they were okay. Jason, all of us got such great information, uh, and this is a bit of props to you through the day on your Twitter account. You, you had so much useful information to share for everybody, but there's one particular tweet that's been tweeted over 3,000 times last time I looked, probably way more than that by now, uh, and it really captures the emotion of the day from a parent's perspective. Tell us about that. Yeah, this was at the front of the school this morning, Doug, and there was a mother there who came just like other parents looking for her son. And, and one of those things in that moment that she told me was that her son had sent her a text that just said, and I'm, I'm going to look at it now so I can read it right, but it just said, Mom, help. Mom, help. And that's kind of what grabbed at me right there. And I thought in that moment, that, that text really kind of encapsulated everything that was happening. In those first few moments, uh, that boy's first instinct was to ask his mom for help, even though she couldn't. And her instinct was run to the school to try to help her son. He, he was okay. She was talking with him on a video call on FaceTime. Uh, but that was that first instinct. And I really thought it, it captured the situation well.
Yeah, ne never have so few words captured so much heartfelt attention. Jason, thank you so very much. Mansfield ISD, by the way, if you haven't heard by now, they have gone on record say there will be no classes tomorrow at Timberview High School. Uh, only the high school, by the way. Uh, everybody else is, is in session. Counseling, we do know, is being made available for students, families, and staff tomorrow as well to talk about and to process what has happened. Some will get through it okay. Some will need to talk this thing out. Uh, this is going to be at Word of Truth Church. Here behind me at the Center for Performing Arts and also virtual counseling uh, for an hour. They're going to do that from 11 a.m. until noon. Again, all of that planned tomorrow, but no school for Timberview High School tomorrow to begin to process what has unfolded on this very tough day.